Now, I'm delighted to say James Tracy, former Leinster and Ireland hooker, is with us in studio. Uh, James, good morning to you. How are you getting on? Thank you very much. Thanks for having me in. Good time for Irish rugby at the moment. Um, about as good as it's ever been. I was about to say that. I was like, not bad. Not yeah. bad, yeah. Um, I think for, from, a, from a fan point of view now, watching on, um, it's unbelievable to watch like the brand that they're playing, uh, as well as being dominant uh, in, in most areas as well. Um, I think it's it's probably... The best spot we've been we've been going into a World Cup, but um, you know, hopefully, a, a Grand Slam or um, you know, even a Six Nations win is on the cards first. Tell me, uh, I, I was behind the goal um, where Ringo scored his his try at the weekend, but in the first half when we had the ball, the the movement of the ball was so quick that at times I was like, which of these lads has it at the moment? And then you'd see the the play would spin off to the left. Were there ever times in training where you're like, holy oh, shit, this is good? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've we've played with you know the likes of Johnny, you, you know, some of the lads who are the best to ever do it. Uh, you're always going to be surprised about how good they are and how like us mere mortals are, <laughs> are lucky to be on the same field. Um, but yeah, no the. Like Stuart, when he came over, would have brought a lot of pace into our training. So it's very intense, uh, very quick. We were Tuesdays, our Tuesday session. He kind of takes the reins and, and uh, makes sure everyone's unbelievably high paced. And that's uh, the detail at high pace is kind of comfortable and chaos is, is, uh, is what he wants us to get in. And I think that's really fed into to what Ireland are doing. And uh, in now they've kind of like taken it to another level. We assume that that is to do with breakdown and body positioning and all that kind of stuff. And I'm sure it is, but it's equally, I guess, handling. The handling skills seem to be off the charts at the moment. It is, it is, but it's it's everything, as you said. It's it's the the little detail, um, and it carries over to everything. It's like the attention to the 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 tiny, minute bits of detail. Because at the end of the day, like everyone runs very similar shapes, but it's how you run them and how you 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 like get people off the, their feet at the rock and everyone knowing their ne- their next role and how you're trying to manipulate the defence. Um, you know, uh, a good analogy. You know, like a pit stop when there's, you know, twenty people are involved in changing uh, the tires and getting the fuel in and everything. If one person messes up, it, you know, it it, yeah. it it doesn't work. So everyone has like a little role to play that makes the car go that little bit much much faster. Okay, that that does make sense. We we asked you a nice handy one uh, as your introduction to us to do the depth charts for the front <laughs> row, and I I thought this was going to be a very straightforward. It's very obvious at the moment. We all know what our first choice front row is, and to lose head followed expected lines with Porter first Teeley second and Kilcoyne third but at Hooker there seems to be some mistake it says <laughs> Kelleher number one and Dan Sheehan's number two but Dan Sheehan's world, like the best player in the world what's going on here? I think uh, first of all I feel like I was set up for failure with, with this one but uh, I know typo like, typo yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, listen the, I think Dan's been unbelievable and I think it's one of those kind of like Messi Ronaldo situations where it's like you're doing well if you've either of them in your team uh, but it's you know w- what would you prefer at the time and I think uh, like I think Ronan at his at his peak before he had this run of injuries I thought could have been one of the best to ever do it his scrummaging uh, is, is off the charts as well as all the other things but like I sat there for I, you know I had about 20 minutes to do it I sat there for 10 minutes of kind of been like him and Han of, of what it was um, it's Dan's jersey now by 100% um, but I just think for, from um, you know playing against both and scrumming against both and everything, I was just kind of like, oh, like just you know, it's about balance in the front row as well of like who who you're starting and and I just tiny like pip. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So explain this to us, right? Uh, going against them, um, you, you mentioned Keller scrummaging straight off there. What is cause we haven't a clue what that is, right? Like what what is that the pressure you feel when you're up against him? Is that like you're off your spot? Is it his center of gravity? What is it specifically that you're like? Oh, that's wrong, Gallagher. It's a bit of everything. It's his understanding of of how to make you feel uncomfortable. The like every scrum is is different uh, uh, when you're in there, and, and I think that's what makes Tyke Furlong so exceptional. Is uh, you know there's a lot of scrummers out there who are good by just being aggressive, or they're good because they can hold the fort. But there's a there's a level of intellect which kind of takes you to the next level, and that's like the Tyke Furlongs of the world is what makes him. You know, one of the best to ever do it at tight head, um, and I think uh, Ronan would would be kind of 
very, very, very intelligent in that area, as well as being an absolute freak of nature, which Dan St. Jean is also an absolute freak of nature. Yeah, so like, that helps. It, it, you know, I'm lucky that these two freaks of nature didn't come along five years earlier because I wouldn't have had any sort of career. So I'm delighted for that. But, uh, you know, I can't really pick too much between them. But if I'm to, to nitpick a tiny bit, uh, I, I think I, I'd pip. Even to have Rob Herring at three, like I mean, strength and depth, as we've been saying on the show a couple of weeks, for the last couple of weeks, is imperative if you're going to win not only a Grand Slam but a World Cup. So that looks good. Yeah, no, and, and he's unbelievably solid and, and fair play to him. He's uh, like is 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 throwing um, and and seems like his leadership on the pitch and and he's very calm, um, which is important, especially like you're coming into to big games, um, you know. You're you're sitting there and you want to make a big impact, but first you got to kind of, especially as a hooker, because a lot of times you come on and it's a throw is your first thing and it's yeah. a big moment. Yeah, uh, you just got to like fit in, do your job first. Yeah, literally fit in, do your job first, and then everything else after that is a, is a bonus. Um, can you explain the in- intelligence of Furlong as well? Because it's not something that again any of us understand really. But when you're uh, in a front row against Furlong and, and Kelleher saying. And it's training. How do you know it, it's it's Furlong versus anybody else who it could be? What do you mean? What are you feeling that's different when Furlong and you're going up against them? It's more when I'm trying to like when you're trying to do something to them. It's their ability to adapt, uh, or you know they'll come up with something that you haven't felt before, and and that's the difference between you know so like some people can be really good at doing one thing, and they can make an unbelievable career doing one thing. Like Michael Bent was an exceptional. Uh, aggressive scrummager but he was like you know if you're talking top trumps 10 out of 10 at doing one thing right um, but uh, you know his uh, his abilities if you if you could block that you know he might not have had as many things in the repertoire uh, as someone else but my god was he good at that one thing and if you, it was very hard to stop um, what well, I feel like Ty would have he could do he almost kind of he could deal with any situation really and he, he can solve a lot of situations that a lot of other tight heads might not be able to do and, and that's what for me anyway puts him on that next level of, of and the type of situations he's coming up against is uh, somebody like changing the angle or, exactly, or yeah. them cheating one way or another yes exactly yeah. and every, like it's everyone's you know we're all trying to get our, our advantage some way and, and there's loads of different ways to scrummage and, and you know you, you always come up with they find a new way of, of either Bending the laws, or um, or getting away with certain ways of scrummaging, and and it's figuring out okay, how do we problem solve in the heat of the moment in the biggest games, because um, that that's the hardest part. How much of that is down to the analysis you do before the game starts on the referee and what they're going to allow? Does that change the strategy in the build up to the game? Going okay, we have this referee and these touch judges who are going to referee this this way that'll allow us to do a certain thing. Is that? A small part, a big part. It's a layer, um, so it'd be part of our prep. So it'd be the, towards the end of our prep. It would be a lot on, uh, you know, obviously who you're playing against, the individuals, and again, like from looking at footage, what are they really good at? What are they? What do they not like? And then coming up with a plan of, okay, this is our starting front row because again, it's all about the pairings of who you have and what their strengths are, and um, because you know. If if Keenheedy's on one side and and uh, and and Tig's on the other, you know, like Tig, uh, you know, they they are they are a good pairing. But you'd have some loose heads that might be a good pairing with a tight head and, and vice versa in terms of what they're good at. Right. And trying to figure out how you can manipulate that. So, so then, so a few layers, and then the ref comes into it. But right. like, okay, well, this ref doesn't like this picture, and that's kind of what we want to do. Maybe it's we'll we'll pick the area on the field, or we'll do that because or and the situation. So that that kind of comes into decision making. Okay. Is it worth our while taking this punt to go for this this style of uh, of attack? And how scientific can you be then in the actual moment, right? So this is all the theory, and then you get to the practice. Everybody has a plan until they get a punch in the course. face. Of course, yeah, 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 and 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 that's what makes good pl- the separates good players from great players is being able to, you know, you're never going to be perfect all the time, but being able to realize, okay, what went wrong there what's our solution and then actually executing the solution in the next one so um, it'll be on the hooker quite a lot to 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 have a conversation with the, the two props the rest of the lads will just listen and go and go and uh, what are those conversations about like I'm feeling what are you exactly what side. you're feeling what you, what uh, you feel the setup's like what you feel could be done differently and then what's the plan for, for the next one and have there been games where it's been going horribly after three or four scrums and you're able to fix that 
Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah, like, yeah. Well, like, you know, you look back at some ones that really stand out, like the, the Leinster, uh, the European Cup final. Northampton game. Northampton game, yeah. exactly. Where, you know, Tongui is having an absolute field day um, and, and they, you know, they, they change up what they're doing at half time and then all of a sudden they're on top in the scrum and the whole game turns on its head. Yeah. Um, it, it's just problem solving sometimes is that technical as opposed to like uh, some kind of physical inspiration that somebody gets a it's resume? a combination of both right yeah because you look at the uh, like the the Argentinian uh, teams and the Italian teams of old where uh, and Georgian teams where there'd be a lot of like passion uh, would be driven in and, and maybe not as much uh, a technique now I'm going back years now they've definitely that's not the case anymore but they were exceptionally good because they were all driven at doing one thing exceptionally passionate exceptionally well um, and and now the, the game's moved on and so have they um, but you know it just shows that like if, if you're all bought into one way of doing things like, that can work too in preparation sense James so you think of NFL and you know I guess in, in training sessions quarterbacks uh, the the number one quarterback is the guy who gets most of the training sessions done. You don't really practice with your backup quarterback, maybe a little bit. You say something like tight for a long injury happens. Finley Beelham comes in a tight head. Uh, clearly, Ireland at the moment have been practicing with a number of different permutations, and Tom O'Toole comes in seamlessly at the weekend as well. So I, I'd imagine in, in training sessions at this elite level of rugby, every single eventuality of front row is is dealt with and, and covered at some point. You'd think that, uh, but uh, like there's a level, there's only so many reps. So, you know, it's kind of like it's, it's, a, it's a game of of trying to get the most amount of volume in without injuring people and having them too tired. So it's like there's a happy medium between getting um, synergy between the different players, but at the same time, you know, it's a traditional game. There's only so many kind of miles in the clock you have, so you don't want to go 50 scrums so everyone gets to uh, scrummage with each other. No, it's kind of like we only have, you know, we only might only have 20 uh, to do. So, okay, you want to have that starting front row getting at least half of those, if not more, together, and then everything else. Y- y- we do quite a bit of um, of setups, which is not going to engagement with the different combinations, mm. and then you're you're setting uh, you're 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 at least getting the setup part. Uh, you're getting familiar there, um, but it's kind of over time you build a relationship with everyone because you don't really get as many reps as you'd like with everyone. But the starters and the subs will always get a decent uh, rep, amount of reps together. When Leo was uh, was talking about you in um, your retirement press release, he talked about your attention to detail and the amount of time you spent in the analysis room. And it's clear listening to you now that you still have a massive grow for that. Is there coaching in your future at some point, do you think? I don't think so. No? No, not not right now anyway. Um uh, yeah, and it's not not on the not on the horizon. I'm gonna. It's tam- a lot of rugby tam- knowledge that's just like setting off into the ether, you know. Yeah. Oh, I know, and that's that's probably the hardest part. I think of finishing up is just been like, what do you do with the the IP built up over kind of like fifteen years? Um, but I think I like I want to challenge myself in something new. Um, yeah, I'll I'll, fi- I'll figure something out on on that side of things because I do I I really enjoy it. Like I, I watch the games and. I'm always, oh, we're, you know, they're, they're doing this now and, oh, they could have done that differently or, you know, appreciating the, the brilliance of the, some of the little things um, because, like, you know, you get, you get addicted to it after a while when yeah, you've done it for so long. I can see how, why you would. Um, the other thing that I'm pushing my Kildare agenda here, um, <laughs> the rugby in Kildare just exploded. Yeah. Like, uh, obviously, there's the boys down in Munster, but... Um, Apparently, young Osborne has many other brothers who are nearly as good. There's Jimmy O'Brien. There's yourself. What happened? When did like? Because they all seem to have come together around the same time. Uh, it's something in the water down there. I don't know. Um, no, like Nace has been a brilliant club for for a long time, and and uh, like a lot of the the Kildare clubs. Um, but yeah, I, I'm not sure what the secret sauce is that that they're all coming through at once. But. Um, no, it's always been a great rugby county, but uh, yeah, it's just been great, like brilliant. Even having a few more Newbridge College lads coming up through the ranks, um, which, which has been good. Um, How good is Osborne? Very good. Yeah, he's got a cannon of a of a left foot as well. Yeah, he is. He, he's going to be exceptional. If you think like he's a kid, you know, like he came in, he was he was he nineteen making that first first game, and what what a moment as well, you know. Of, <laughs> Off that line out, driving him back, uh, big first hit. What what a way to to enter professional rugby. But you know, a lot of lads are playing college rugby or club rugby 
um, at 19. Yeah. And you know, you're getting your first experience of playing against... And you look like a 19-year-old. Exactly. And you're playing against men and you're like, wow, this is a big step up. You know, ne- never mind playing professionally against against men, even yeah. though you know, you're, you're considered a man, but you're, you're not really, you know, you're, no, you have a lot of growing to do. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So uh, it's been exceptional, I, th- I think, is a huge ceiling for him. Um, when the team is doing as well as they are this season, is it hard for you to watch that now retired? Yeah, I'd be lying if I didn't say. Uh, you want to be part of it, you know. I, I've been there for the whole journey and the ups and the highs and the lows and, and everything. Um, yeah, it, it's very tough to watch. But, but I'll preface that by saying it makes it a lot easier to swallow knowing that it's Dan and Ronan because I know I wouldn't be playing anyway because I wouldn't have <laughs> big me in a million years over them so that makes it a lot easier okay okay it was like that makes it enough. a lot easier but uh, <laughs> it was injury in the end because you're only 31 right so yeah. like there's still you know three four five years of a high quality front row if you wanted it there for you yeah yeah so that's that's the tough part but again, the easy part is looking, well, I wouldn't play it anyway, so <laughs> you're looking at these guys, you know, I had a different role in the team when, when they started coming through. But um, yeah, no, they're two freaks of nature, so I... Uh, is there any hangover from your injury? Are you totally fine? Like it was just, a, it would have prevented you from playing rugby at a high level, but it's there's no debilitating day-to-day stuff? Um, a little bit, like kind of fuzziness in my hand and it wouldn't, it, like it don't quite have the uh, full strength... Uh, I never had the greatest throw in the world in terms of like throwing a ball uh, with thing, but uh, it's like I have two bad hands now, but uh, that'll come back. Um, but yeah, rugby is just the main thing. I just can't do my job. Right. Um, yeah. So like, I, it's horrible to, uh, to uh, but does that make it easier in a way? It's like I can't do the thing that I'm supposed to do, and so yeah, no point in me continuing with this. Yeah, I, and I played around with that in my head when I finished. It was like. You know, if I dragged on, you know, trying to cling on for maybe two or three years, I think that would have been worse than at least it was out of my like out of my hands. There's no possible way I could play. So at least there's a bit of uh, peace in that. It's a hard out road, like the the that side of professional sport. Like and, and you've seen it. I think several of your teammates over the last couple of years. You know. Um, Dan Levy, obviously, probably the most high profile, but there's loads of other players who play one or two seasons who just make it to yeah. the squad and then don't get to have the career. So is there peace in that, that there's like a European Cup, there's Ireland Caps, you know, there was there was a really high level of success in a brilliant team? Or does that make it worse? Uh, yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's both sides. Right. So I'm very grateful for all of that, obviously, but you always want more. Like, and that's the... Um, like, it's bred into us as well. It's always, you know... Well, that's what makes you an elite sports person. Yeah. Um, uh, you uh, always want a little bit more. and, and uh, But, you know, when it's all said and done, I am very grateful for, for the journey that I've been on. I find it even fascinating hearing you talk before about the, about the summer before you get your first cap under Schmidt and all of a sudden you're throwing this hooker and you're, you weren't confident throwing. And no. it's some, it sounds like a, a, a simple thing for a rugby player, but it's, it's not. Like, there's so much to the position and to the skill that all of a sudden it's like learning to ride a bike I'd imagine yeah uh, honestly like comical if you could hear, I've heard the voices in my head going on of like every time the ball was kicked either we win a penalty and kick the touch and I'm like oh no or like you know even worse they've done an attacking kick and it's like dribbled out on the five metre line and you're like oh god um, but genuinely I it didn't. I wasn't comfortable for about two years Right. I, that voice didn't leave my head for about two years um, and I was practicing practicing so much every day but I, I I felt like I had so much to catch up on you know I had years and years and years of reps to, to catch up on um, but yeah you got through got through it in the end but my god it was uh, it was a tough period for just internally you know what I mean it's all this internal negative voice been, did you tell anybody? Uh, no no it just kind of weathered, weathered it but like I wouldn't say it was that hard to tell. <laughs> Tossing <laughs> grenades into the line so I was hardly walking around with a smile on my face. Um but yeah, it just it was part of part of the journey of of uh you know, I, I probably had a a limited shelf life in terms of kind of getting my act together there. Um which is probably good in a way, you know, what like kind of forced me into to having to, to practice loads, uh and then that just became part of my routine. It obviously worked out for you. James, this was brilliant. Thanks a million. Um, very natural at this. If you want to come back to us sometime, we'd be delighted to have you back. Um, are Ireland going to do the Grand Slam? I feel like they will, yeah. 
Yeah, no, they will. They will. I, I won't sit in the fence. They will. Yeah, Scotland are the only problem, really. Yeah. And I'm I, I, smash England in the last day and it'll be real. Yeah, there, so. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> the fact we have them at home as well is brilliant. No, I feel like we have Scotland's number as well. They're, they're playing good stuff, but um, I think like if you look at our track record against them and against Scottish sides, uh, we have their number. Good stuff. James, great to have you with us and uh, congratulations on a brilliant career. You know, it's one of those things that um, we haven't had the opportunity to talk to you since. So, uh, well done. Thanks so much for joining us today.